It's the fifth day of the curfew in the valley and while in some areas the curfew has been relaxed, large parts continue to remain under curfew and of course the hospitals, pharmacies and emergency services remain open. Mobile internet services are still down but the PSNL broadband service is available only for those who have access to it. The media gag has been lifted today and newspapers are now being circulated. Many in the valley are questioning this clampdown of their right to protest. So on the social network today we discuss Kashmir siege, curfew justified. All right, joining us on the show today, we've got with us Lieutenant General Nilbhai Sharma, who's the Corp Commander in Kashmir. Thank you, thank you, sir. And he's, of course, spent 20 years there in that area. We've also got with us in the studio, Shaila Rashid. She's the Project Officer of Internet Democracy Project. We're also joined from Srinagar by Sadat Hussain, who's a blogger. He joins us on a video call. Thank you, Sadat, for joining us. And, of course, also from Srinagar, we're joined by Nazir Masoodi from Srinagar. Thank you, Nazir, also for coming into the studio. Uh, sir, I just want to start uh, with you first. Uh, you know, of course, this curfew was imposed before the night before Afzal Guru's hanging. Uh, and a lot of people are questioning why they have actually been imprisoned in their own houses, uh, in a sense, by the state. What do you make of it? Well, it's a very important question. And uh, if you permit, before I answer that, I just want to tell you that in this back and forth, uh, we should not forget that there are two elements which have paid a very heavy price for the peace that has come into the Valley of Kashmir now. That is the people of Kashmir and the men in uniform. And I think at no stage should this be forgotten. And as far as imposing of the curfew is concerned, it's an administrative decision. And I think the way it is unfolding and the way it is being relaxed now is a matter of time. While it is an inconvenience which is best avoided, Sometimes it becomes administratively necessary. I, for one, would hesitate to pass a value judgment sitting here in Delhi. But uh, de there is definitely the people in the state administration there has taken cognizance of it. And I think uh, it will ease out very soon. I, I have no doubts. OK, let's just cut across uh, straight to Nazir, who's actually in uh, Srinagar. Uh, Nazir, what's happening over there? Well, uh, Kashish, there has been some relaxation in the curfew today in some parts of the Srinagar and, and some other parts of the valley. Uh, but certainly large parts of the valley still remain under very strict curfew because authorities are still fearing trouble. That's why in anticipation to this trouble, before Abzal Guru was hanged, Wali here woke up to this curfew. They were asked to be indoors. And since then, everybody is asking question. If there was no trouble, in, if there are some areas which are, not, uh, which are known that they, they do create trouble, even they were put under curfew was the reason but the authorities say yes they have a compelling reason because if something wrong happens who will be held accountable they want to maintain peace but certainly entire valley has been literally they, as every political party is saying it has been made as a la large prison and people are being punished there is a collective punishment for the people because government wants to maintain peace and because there is a anger against uh, Abzal Guru's hanging large sentiment we have seen it before and uh, that is why government has imposed curfew, but certainly there has some uh, relaxation in it. It they has been by and large been peaceful. There has not been any major incident from any part of the valley. Yes, three people have already died. One young boy, 15 year old, Ubaid Ahmed has received uh, blood, uh, blood of security force in his uh, stomach. He died in hospital. Uh, five more people were injured in that firing. Over 100 people have been injured in these. Uh, these clash and many security forces have also been injured in stone pelting and other clashes with the security forces. The situation is still tense, but certainly under control, and today's day has passed off so far peacefully without any major incident of clash. Sadat, of course, you've been, uh, you know, you've been writing as well. Uh, you know, we saw some of your pieces earlier online as well. What do you, what do you make of what's happening in uh, Srinagar? I primarily would object to the word curfew. It's not a curfew, it's a siege actually. You don't put uh, whole populations to collective humiliation and uh, uh, collective punishment just because they want to vent out something. You're actually going against the fundamental right of these people, the constitutional right of these people. Uh, Lieutenant General is very right, he, he may have his apprehensions, but does he not understand that they are violating 91A, 91B, 91D of free movement, of assembly, of the right of expression? Even when they say Kashmir is a part of India, which let me not talk about politics here, let me talk about human values here. Are you not violating the fundamental rights of Kashmiris here by putting them collectively under siege? 
and not letting so, them even their basic so right want, to prepare. Many questions, like, of course, are being raised about, you know, is the best way really to deal with it by clamping down really on the protesters, which no, is, of course, what Sadat is raising. I, on humanitarian grounds, I personally feel that uh, imposing of a curfew or in many ways beyond a point, if it's not justified, could be denial of fundamental rights. But let's just for a moment uh, look at the entire issue in totality and put it in the right context. And I have tremendous faith in the good sense uh, and the sincerity of people of Kashmir. Do you know where we have reached today? From where we were 20 years back? And therefore, it is important for us to test out the peace dividend at this point in time and certain amount of inconvenience and difficulties have to be accepted if we want to march ahead. Let us not allow those who want to vitiate the atmosphere of the valley to get away with it. Let me tell you, last year, there's something like 12 million pilgrims who came to Vaishnav Devi and 6 million to Amarnath. The Kashmir Valley is prospering now. Yes, there are wounds which, have, which will take time to heal. And I, for one, will, am always with those who have suffered. But let us not, let us not get taken in by that at this point in time. I think things are improving. It's a matter of few days. Everything will be back to normal. And my appeal to the people of Kashmir, whom I hold in very high esteem is, please, and especially the youth, don't get taken in. Shela, you're one of the youth that, uh, that uh, left in general is referring to. Um, first of all, I have a problem with Nazir Saab's wording, uh, which is uh, trouble, trouble and peace. Uh, first of all, this is not just a law and order problem. People are angry, they are very angry. And uh, we can't just say that a few Kashmiris will create trouble, someone will instigate trouble. I have a problem with that entire terminology. These are citizens who are very angry with something that has happened, something, uh, uh, a decision which has been taken in absolute secrecy and uh, executed in much more secrecy. So um, I have a problem, um, problem with that terminology. People um, <clears throat> have a right to express their uh, dissent, their uh, grievances, and you know that uh, I don't, I don't understand why the government is fundamentally uh, afraid of technology. I mean, technology in itself does not instigate people or does not manufacture dissent. People have grievances. That's why they want to vent them out. Um, for example, SMS. There has been a ban for, on SMS for about three years now. So you know, where, where do these current protests come from then? You know, they have not been instigated by SMS. They are there because there are some grievances that people want to express. So it is highly unacceptable to impose a preemptive curfew on people. And, uh, you know, not, they, they don't even know that something of this sort is going to happen. Some people are not al allowed to go to the hospitals. Uh, uh, I, I, I fully share her sentiments. And, uh, but I would like to remind her that prevention is better than cure. But more importantly, I would go a step further. Not only the uh, SMSs and the use of telephones and mobile, everything should be permitted. I think this is a time when the central government and the state government should reach out to the people, right. explain to them what has happened. And oh. it's very important. Uh, okay. uh, and political parties, for God's sake, must come together. So you think that perhaps this could have been handled a little differently, maybe? Uh, well, in hindsight, one can be wise. But I think given the circumstances and the situation, uh, there are many imponderables and variables. I think it has been handled in the best manner that it could be. Yes, there is always a place for improvement. There are questions which uh, will have to be uh, answered, asked for. But I think the overall thrust must not be lost sight of, and we should not allow either a faith of a perpetrator or anybody else to let the peace discourse be hijacked. Sadat, you want to respond? Uh... Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the gen decorated general who was part of 71 war as a part of the airborne assault group has his experience in Kashmir. He was a security advisor to government from 2003 to 2005, in addition to being the Cox commander. General, do I remind you of your words of, 2000, uh, of your tenure as an uh, advisor? How far has Kashmir reached from your tenure as advisor to now? Are we not at the same place where you did not trust Kashmiris then and you do not Kashmiris now? Then you barricaded Kashmiris exactly for the same reason that you are barricading them from now. Where is the trust deficit going, except for the negative term? Part one, part two. With the sealing of communication channels, you are only making them believe that it's a forced marriage on both sides of the spectrum. Neither do we accept you, plus you reject us. You are reinforcing the okay. feeling that you are not in the trust side of Kashmiris. Okay. I 
I am glad you reminded me and uh, I recall having met you during that time and uh, I share your sentiments first of all. As far as situation is concerned between that time and now, if you recall we were looking at something like two to three thousand terrorists in the entire state of Jammu and Kashmir. Now there are not more than two to three hundred, that is one. And second thing as far as communication is concerned, reaching out, communicating to people is concerned, I am all for it. I don't think there should be any restriction imposed and uh, we should be able to talk to the people. It is the job of the political parties and civil society and media as well to reach out and explain to them and if there is something which has gone amiss, it must be corrected. There's no question. Okay, Shella, really quickly, no. you wanted to say something. Yeah, I don't understand why we always talk about uh, rights as, uh, you know, we always talk about national interest versus people interest. We have to understand at some point that people's interest is national interest. How can we separate the two? The two. And, you know, how can we clamp down on legitimate means of expression? What is the message that we are sending out to the youth? We don't let them tweet. We don't let them up update on Facebook. Where do they go and vent their anger? What are they going to do? I mean, these are young people. They have political rights. How can we clamp down on them? This is highly unacceptable acceptable on the part of the state. Okay, Nazir, I just want to come back to you and ask you, and of course, uh, you know, uh, 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 of course, the Friday uh, is a crucial day in the Valley. How is the government really preparing to handle that? Well, uh, Friday is certainly a crucial day, and that's where they want to continue this curfew till Friday, because Friday they are expecting the big Friday congressions. But as for my information, they're highly unlikely to allow any Friday, Friday congression to take place in any major mosque in the Valley. So that has been the security drill before whenever there has been they were anticipating trouble and that's exactly they will be following today. In fact, a large contingent of security force have also been called in. In fact, the security force from the Gachuruli in Maharashtra, I met today one IGP of the CRPF, Mr. Nalin Prabhat, he has been called here to look after security in um, North Kashmir. So they are doing their level best, whatever it takes so that the uh, trouble doesn't you know, f uh, flare up. So they, th um, because there's anger across the valley, as Shela was, um, you know, expressing. That is a fact. That's why, because the government were anticipating that there's a sentiment is involved. There, people have been always demanding that Abdul Guru should not be hanged. That's why, in anticipation to that trouble and the public uh, civilian unrest, that's why they have, uh, you know, uh, imposed curfew across the valley in all the ten districts of the valley, and it's not just the curfew as we they all were discussing that the internet blockade cable chains were up there so then uh, the bulk sms are already you know in a band in kashmir and then there are the prepaid phones don't have the sms facility okay. so all these stringent measures blocking the information and then uh, imposing the curfew okay. has a huge impact on the daily lives of the people so now they are preparing for the friday which will be very very, very crucial day for them but they say a strict curfew will be imposed to calm the temples Okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, Nazir. I'm sorry uh, we're completely out of time, but thank you all uh, so much for coming on the show today.